Hello, thank you for tuning into my channel. I'm working on some string blocks today. So if you want to see how I make string blocks using paper foundations, please stay tuned. I have some string blocks that I've been working on for the last couple weeks and I wanted to show just a quick tutorial about how I make them. These blocks are really super simple and I know that there are lots of YouTube tutorials about how to make them but I'm just going to show what I'm working on right now. I'm actually doing two sets of blocks. These are all my dark blocks here so far and then I'm also creating some light blocks as well so that um, I can put them in an upcoming project. I went ahead and I've gone ahead and prepared my paper. I'll show you what paper I'm using in a minute. Um, this kind of block uses just about any kind of paper that you want as long as it's not too thick. I'm using regular copy paper but you can use if you have like a phone book you can use phone book pages. You can use newspaper if you saw my street art pixel quilt I used newspaper as a foundation but today I'm just doing a little bit of paper recycling I'm gonna do um, a little close-up of this paper just so you can see what I'm look working with it's just plain paper so let's zoom in on it well no we don't have to so when I was preparing for this project I was like I need to make a string quilt and I had some newspaper but I was gonna have to really cut it down and I didn't want to do that I don't want to take the time to cut out almost 60 squares of newspaper and so I had these um, this is just paper that was around my house you can see that it is music paper um, so it's just leftover paper and it was eight and a half by eleven but since I wanted squares I went ahead and cut it down to um to eight and a half inch square this is actually a drill chart i was working with the marching band this year and this is one of their uh, drill chart sheets it even has the holes at the bottom because it was in a, a binder in a notebook um so this paper it'll be fine to stitch on i think i've never used this as a foundation but i think it'll be okay um for my strips these are all just strips of fabric that I had in my stash. I'm going to show you now the bags. If you follow my channel, you know that I have strings in these plastic bags. I've, I've never tried to store them anywhere else. This is my primary string storage right here. So if I have a piece, um, if I have something that I've been working on and there's just a strip of fabric left, I throw it in here. And so I'm going to try to dig down the bottom and kind of churn this out a little bit to see what different pieces I can pull out. And then I have another um, little bag. This is actually something that I won at the Quilt Guild. It was just some scraps that somebody had put in the bag. And so as I go through this, I'm finding that there are pieces that are not strings. So I pulled all these out and just... I'm not like searching for them, but if I get ready to pull a piece out at random and it's a big piece, I just put it to the side because I don't need it for this project. Um, I have in the past, I have made some string quilts, but they were both uh, quilts as you go. I'm going to put a picture of both of those quilts here and I'll link the videos as well in the description box and in the I cards. So you can check out the two previous quilts that I made using string piecing. Um, but right now, I'm just going to show quickly how to do a string block on this 8.5 inch square foundation. I'm going to um, put the sewing machine here and then change the view of the camera so you can see what I'm doing. I'm getting ready to stitch some pieces onto my paper foundation. Again, this is just plain paper. Um, it even has little holes where it was in a binder. See that right there. Um, and I'm just going to start pre preparing for my block. I've pulled two pieces. These were just random pieces out of my 
uh, sash bag. And the first piece I'm just going to put along the diagonal. I prefer for my blocks to have diagonal string blocks, but you can do um, either horizontal or vertical depending on what you need for your project or your own personal preference. So I pulled this one first and you see it's just a little bit longer than the edge of the paper and that's what I want. If it's super wrinkled, then you might want to run um, the iron over it, flatten it out a little bit. I don't usually worry about ironing until the end unless my pieces are just super, super wrinkled. I've chosen the next piece that's going to go beside it as well. And I'm just going to give it a little snip so that it's just bigger than the paper. Okay. All right. And I've had to cut both of these pieces down a little to, um, so that they fit. And you can either move them to the side so that you know you already have some good strips or just throw them back in the bag so that they can be chosen again at random. So to stitch these down, I'm going to flip them right sides together and I'm going to do a quarter inch along this right side. I have another block that I'm working on in my sewing machine and so I'm chain piecing the block so I, I generally make two at a time and I am and so I just move that one out of the way a little bit and then place this one and I start stitching just outside the paper. Okay, so and again I shorten my stitch length. There's a little bit of thread that got on my presser foot, so let's move that. Okay. Shorten your stitch length. And so it depends. Your machine may handle the paper a little bit differently. I don't feel like this machine likes the newspaper, I mean, likes this uh, copy paper that much, but it doesn't matter. It'll still go through it. Okay. And again, just that quarter inch seam along the side. Okay. All right in. And then, so what I'm going to do next, I'm actually going to leave that on the machine and I'm going to go to my previous block and cut it off because I'm in mid block here. Okay, so for this step, I've already stitched the first one on and the second one I've stitched on either side of the center. Okay, and now I'm just going to, I just do a finger press on this. And now I'm going to randomly choose another piece to go on either side. I have a few already set aside from other blocks. And so I'm just going to pull some to see if they're long enough. Like I have this one. Okay, it's not long enough for that side, but it could go along this side. And for a project like this, try not to freak out about them matching. If you really want them to um, match, then you definitely would choose your fabrics ahead of time or um, if you wanted to do like a two and a half inch strip bundle or a one and a half inch strip bundle or you could make your own strip so that they go mine is just a scrap quilt I'm just trying to get rid of some scraps so all it all works together alrighty so here's the the second one. Now back to the first one that I stitched. Here it is. Again, fold this out. Finger press. And then choose another one out of the bundle. And I'm going to go ahead and finish stitching these until, or I'm going to work on them until I have an entire block finished. And then I'll show you the next step.
here is one of the finished blocks and this one didn't take that many passes because of the strips are pretty wide you can do whatever size um, strip you want for your piece the thinner the strips the more um, the longer it takes just because there are more seams that have to be done and the next step is just going to be to cut this down and I'm basically using my paper as the template but I'm also using my ruler just to make sure I get the right measurement um, just again it's an eight and a half inch square that I'm looking for I'm just lining it up on two sides to the eight and a half mark and giving it a cut and then I'm flipping it around to the other two sides just lining it up at eight and a half Again, quick cut. And now it's done. So it looks a lot neater now that it's cut down to the eight and a half inch square. And I'm just going to put it on my stack of dark squares. And then I'm going to show you on my bag here that I'm storing my templates in. Well, okay. I've actually written on here. Let's see if you can see it. How many of each I need. Like I wrote how many lights I need, how many darks I need. And I'm just going to, since that's a dark, I'm just going to mark it here that I finished it so that I'll keep track of how many blocks I've made. I hope you've enjoyed this really quick tutorial on making a string block using this uh, paper backing. This is of course just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to string blocks and I hope that you will take time to explore some different ways to make your own string blocks. If you have any questions about what you've seen in this video, please leave them in the comments below. Also, thumbs up this video and share it with your friends. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye!